Hey there. Today I'm going to do a review on Grumbacher paper and then give you some tips on using pulp watercolor paper as well as update you on my Brian Fry project. I'm going to do a review on Grumbacher watercolor paper. It's a pulp paper and it's very affordable but the reason I decided to do the review is because when I bought this and I looked on YouTube and I wanted to see what other people thought about it. There were very few reviews, just maybe a handful. So I've been using it and I thought I'd go ahead and tell you what I thought about it. This particular one is 30 sheets. It has uh, it's a size 11 by 15. And like I said, I spent about, I think it was 11 or $12 the last time I was over there at my Rinky Dink Walmart and checked on it. And it's a paper that I can get even living in a small town here in the USA that is I, I can just drive right over and pick it up in just a few minutes I don't have to either order it in or go to an art and craft place which was going to take me an hour to get there and the reason I like this particular size is you get this great big sheet which I don't do anything that I need this big of a sheet for watercolor but when you cut it it's still big enough to a watercolor painting just about the right size and you cut it down into fours and it's just about the right size to do a study of your composition before you ever start. Here's one of those half sheets that I used to try out doing a painting. It wasn't something I decided I wanted to do on cotton but it was perfect to try that out and not spend a lot of money or worry about the price of that paper. I use it to try out just techniques and like I said it's very affordable so I'm not concerned I can just work as much as I want to on that and when I'm doing a painting I'll take a piece of this and if there's something I'm going to actually put in the painting I may try it out try out different ways of shading it to see how it takes and it gives me a really good idea how that's going to turn out on my cotton watercolor paper or on my study that I'm doing on this pulp watercolor paper and another thing is I really like it because you can totally wet this down when it's taped. It will buckle a little bit, but when it dries, it dries out almost perfectly flat. I've not found that on a lot of pulp papers. They tend to stay buckled, or not maybe not as bad as they were with the water, but it doesn't look all that great when you take it off with this board either. And when I take this off, it will be almost completely flat. I'm going to show you some of the paintings that I did on cotton watercolor paper with the study that's almost the exact same picture but done with the same paints and that way you can compare them with your own eyes and see what you think. Let me get the camera turned around and we'll get started. This first one I'm showing you, this was just uh, trying out a technique. It's like where you make one of those sunset top skies and you spray it down with a spray bottle of water and then you go in and graduate out of sunset. And that was on Grumbacher it dried out flat when I pulled up the tape. It was just as flat as it could be. And what I'm showing you here is this foreground. I wanted to try out that technique before I used my cotton watercolor paper. And this is the Grumbacher and that's the Fabriano cotton watercolor paper. It took a whole lot of water, as you can see, to make that. And there's not much difference. There's another one. This is another one where you used a lot of water to make it loose flowers. And the one on the left is the Fabriano, and the one on the right is the Grumbacher. Almost all of the studies are smaller than the cotton watercolor paper one. I think the Grumbacher actually turned out better, but I'm sure that had to do with my skills. This one here, that's the study, and I'm showing you this one because they're colors. I used the same colored paints on both of these, and you can see there's very little difference in the colors. So that gives me a really good idea when I'm doing that study as to how it's going to look when I get my cotton watercolor paper out. And I have built up a lot more confidence from that. Same thing here. You can see there's not a lot of difference. It really depends on what you're wanting to do 
on the particular watercolor painting you're doing because for the most part you can use this budget Grumbacher watercolor paper and turn out with a good a really good painting and not feel like that you just can't do anything if you can't afford expensive paper this one I mainly wanted to do the study to work out the colors I was going to use and you can see the colors are almost identical no matter which one of these two you're looking at this is pulp paper and that's a uh, cotton watercolor paper now I'm going to take the time just to show you a little bit of how this paper works with the paint and water on it it's not a tutorial it's just so you can get an idea if this is right for you or not um, this one over here I'm going to try doing something where you have those where the colors blend you know like for a sunset or a sunrise so I can make that work at all. I'm sitting here with this camera in between my legs, so it's a bit cumbersome. I'm trying not to hit that camera, but bear with me on this. Use something that you can actually see the color of what I've got here. When you're doing this, you'll have to move things around to get things moving in whatever direction you want them to go. But to keep them from going so far, it's becoming a, a drip right up in your picture there. And also use a little spray bottle if you get it and it won't move around. I don't think I really need it on this one, but we'll just hit it, hit it with it anyhow. If you have it a little dry and it won't move. But that will not make a blossom. That's going to be huge. It makes a huge difference. Because, like I say, if it starts making that big old blossom when it dries, well, it just ruins the whole thing. And you have to have a lot of water to make these kind of techniques work. This here, I'm just going to do a little pot to see if we can try layering that a little bit and shading that in. Before I start, I'm going to wet that. So it won't look like I painted that on when I was five years old. Let's find something here to start with. You can see that just pulls that right in there. But there's not a big blossom because even with all that water you can see that I have there. up a little bit actually make it look like something now once that started drying out just a bit you can go in and add a little more colored especially to the side you're going to want to have that shadow on but you have to be super gentle what I was telling you, that's why I'm using this black velvet here, because these brushes are just, su they're super soft, come to a super fine point. I don't even get out a fine liner anymore. I just use these. I can do just about anything I need to do with that. And as that dries, you can go back in and darken up the color or with either another color or you can layer it on more of the same color. It's really up to you what you want to do with that. How you want that to look. Now a couple of things you're going to want to keep in mind when you're using uh, a pulp watercolor paper. Well, especially the Grumbachers I know most about. Is be sure to use a soft brush. I usually use 
I think they're silver black velvet because they are so soft that you can not you won't disturb that uh, surface of that paper it won't peel up on you if you're careful another thing is that you've got to be careful when it's wet because you can't continue to rub on that it will cause it to either start peeling or it just will look funny so you've got to let it dry between anything else that you're going to want to put you're not going to want to just keep going after it like you can with cotton cotton is very robust the paper holds up really well to that but pulp will not and when you are painting you'll want to be sure and before you ever put your your paintbrush to your paper plan what you're going to do next make sure your paint's all mixed up and ready to go that you've checked it on a test sheet to make sure that you don't have too much water in your paintbrush because if there's too much water and you have already painted something and you touch it with that paintbrush that dumps a, a bunch of water right there it's going to pick the color up and you're just going to end up with either a, a blossom there or you're going to have it just a white spot uh, if you try to touch it again to pull some of that water up it's going to take the color up with it but be sure no matter what paper you decide to use that you take the time to familiarize yourself with the characteristics of that paper and how you're going to have to work with it because every paper I have used whether it was cotton or pulp I had to take the time to learn about that paper learn how to use that paper because they were all different I haven't used a lot of different cotton watercolor papers I've used mainly Fabriano uh, cold press but I did order many of the try it before you buy it kind of things where you just get two or three samples to try of different cotton watercolor papers and every one of them reacted differently and you would have had to take the time to learn each paper to do the, your best job the same with the pulp papers I would think but I've only really stuck with this Grumbacher because it was handy and it did what I needed it to do for a reasonable price so I could spend time working on my techniques and learning how to do watercolor. Another thing I wanted to say here is that when you're watching YouTube videos you will make it really discouraged if you use pulp watercolor paper and the tutorial that you're watching is being done on cotton watercolor paper. Many of the techniques that they use on the cotton watercolor paper may not work on a pulp paper and you feel like well you don't know you just you know a terrible, terrible painter that you're just wasting your time it could well be because the tutorial you're watching is using a cotton watercolor paper I had that happen to me several times and I finally figured out what the problem was it wasn't that I was so inept that I couldn't figure out and do what I could see somebody doing right before my eyes or make it a fair attempt at it it was because I was using pulp paper to try to do that tutorial and it may not translate you'll really have to you know think about what they're using how much water they're using and how many layers they're putting on whatever this tutorial is to see if you'll even be able to do that with this pulp watercolor paper especially not the way they're doing it you may be able to get something that looks a lot like that but you will have to adjust the ways you're putting your paint on there to make it look that way it's not going to be just like you're using a cotton watercolor paper and I've seen plenty of uh, artists here on YouTube that have said well if you can't use cotton watercolor paper you're just not going to be able to do well you really need to buy this cotton watercolor paper it's the most important thing and I didn't find that necessarily to be true it is true for some things but it's not true across the board there are plenty of techniques that you can use pulp paper on and your artwork will look just great you'll be very proud of what you have done and all of these companies that are making these pulp watercolor papers would not still be in business if you could not use it for watercolor because you're only going to have so many people that buy it the first time and see that it's no good and then they'll pass that information along and nobody's going to buy it the second time well they wouldn't be selling reams of this paper to first time buyers so the paper's good but you'll have to take the time like I say to learn how that paper actually works the characteristics of that particular paper so it's probably best 
to choose one. And if you like it pretty much, it's doing pretty much what you want it to, stick with that one paper. It'll make it so much easier to be able to get results that you're proud of. Also, cotton watercolor paper is not magic paper. I was one of those people who thought, oh, my paintings are just not that good. It's because I can't afford that cotton watercolor paper. Boy, was I wrong. My painting skills were not that good. It had nothing to do with that paper, no matter what paper I'd have been using. I could make a bigger mess on cotton watercolor paper because, it, like I say, it's more robust and could take me really going after it trying to either lift something up or layer something on. But finally the paper would give up on me if I wasn't careful. So don't feel like that cotton watercolor paper is some magic paper that's going to make a huge difference in your art. Until you get your skills up there, that paper is not going to be that, the big difference. It's going to be your painting skills that are going to be your make or break you. So don't fall into that trap because, like I say, I did. Rushed right out and got me some of that expensive paper just to find that I'm still a terrible artist, so I'm going to have to practice. And I don't want you to fall into that too. Well, I hope some of this has helped you. Um, I, like I said, I didn't want to get it too long, and I think I probably talked longer than I intended to start with. So I'm going to stop at this for now, and we'll go to do something else. I got finished with the third painting in my Brian Froud project. And here's a little time lapse that I put together so you can see how this went from start to finish. This painting was a little more complicated than I'm used to. Also, it's kind of small, so there were a few hiccups here and there. But I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I haven't picked out the next one yet, but if I do and get it sketched out, then I'll try to add it to this video before I post it. I hope that Grumbacher review helps someone out, because like I say, it's affordable and it's accessible, at least to people here in the U.S., also, there was not many reviews that I saw on YouTube, or if there were, it was like they just bought the paper for the review and had not spent much time with it, and I've been using it for over a year now. So I hope I can give you some insights on that. If you have any questions, or if you have a personal project of your own going on and you want to share some information, feel free to leave me a comment. I'd love to hear about it. And I think that's really about it for today, so I'm going to leave you in peace. And I hope that your creative light continues to shine, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.